That's Nick. And that's Joseph, and today we're here to talk about Why Don't You Just Die, which uh, is being released courtesy of Arrow Video. Uh, the theatrical release was supposed to be April 10th, uh, but instead it will be available uh, digital HD April 20th uh, with a Blu-ray Blu release a day later. Uh, so it's a Russian film. It's the uh, directorial debut of Kirill Sokolov. It uh, played at a variety of genre themed film festivals, including the Fantasia Film Fest, um, originally in 2018. Has this person directed anything else you know? No, it's his debut. Oh, debut, sorry. Um, tell the story. Uh, it's, it's really almost all takes, it's really a chamber piece. It's uh, a man, uh, Matt V. I'm gonna butcher a bunch of Russian names, uh, played by, he's an up and coming um, Russian actor. He was recently in Acid. Uh, and uh, Kirill Serebrennikov's last film, Leto. Uh, Alexander Kuznetsov uh, shows up at the doorstep of Andre, uh, who's a police detective, Vitaly Kaev, uh, who's also been in two Serebrennikov films. Um, he shows up to the door uh, with a hammer in his hand. Yes. Like pensive, trying to work himself up to ring the doorbell. So you know some shit's gonna go down. He opens the door and basically says, like, I'm here, I know your daughter. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'll fight it. Like, the first, what is it, first 15 minutes? He invites him in and things just kind of uh, go to hell after that. Yeah, I mean, the, the open, like, the first, I mean, the, the movie I really enjoyed. It's action packed, it's mm -hmm. violent, but that first scene of him getting to the house and the fight scene with the dad is pretty intense. Mm -hmm. I mean, I screeched and had to turn away from the screen several times but come to find out that he so the younger guy what's his character's name Matvi. Matvi. yeah sorry to these people um he's convinced by olia his mm -hmm. girlfriend that olia's dad the man whose house he just broke into molested her as a kid mm -hmm. so she wants her boyfriend to kill him as so, she, so she's pulling a pamela smart um, yeah. her boyfriend yeah and so he's a i mean a good guy i guess so he decides to go and kill him but the dad says like i've never molested after they have fought and like gruesomely fought and uh, oh, the the younger guy is uh, fucked up <laughs> he is about to shoot him he's about to shoot the dad and the dad says i never touched her like we can call her and she'll tell you so they do. They put this hoe on speakerphone. And she's like, I don't know. Him. She's like, I don't know this man. I, don't, I didn't send him there. So then now, like, that's a problem. So the boyfriend kind of gives up. The dad. Well, concurrently, we come to learn there's a little bit of a flashback. Um, Andre, the father, uh, recently. He's a cop. He's a cop. And with his uh, partner slash childhood friend, uh, Evgenish, uh, played by Michael Goreboy, who's been in a few American productions as well. Uh, they basically came uh, upon a big... big so they were investigating a crime scene, uh -huh. which is, like, gruesome. Like, some poor lady's been, like, dismembered with a box cutter. Mm -hmm. uh, the person they suspect is this young, rich kid. The Yes. The, and, per the person that's there covered in blood, yeah. And the dad's partner says like oh my wife is really sick we need money for like her treatment let's uh blackmail is that the word mm -hmm. or or whatever let's well I th it's they, not blackmail they, they take money from that man's parents to get him off yeah they basically say like let's uh tell the parents that they give us a bunch of money we'll get their kid off for murder so they do they, they meet the parents tell them like hey put all this money in a bag and leave it at some locker in the train station so the reason the money is important in a flashback is because while the two are fighting in the opening scene, the younger guy shoots a couch and all this money flies mm -hmm. everywhere. So that's the money that they got from the, the, the murderer's parents. But Andre also screwed his partner out of the money, who was left to believe that the money was never delivered. Meanwhile, Olya had caught a glimpse of the money by visiting the apartment, and that's why she had her boyfriend try her to Her scheme, him. yeah, so that's kind of the twist, is yeah. her scheme was, she, she was gonna have her boyfriend kill her dad because she's low on money. Mm -hmm. It's not even that she needs the money for anything, she's just short on cash. Uh -huh. Well, like, she's an aspiring actress. She, she works in a theater company, she gets paid, she also is like a, what it looks like a waitress, a server, and she's uh, threatened to get fired 
they threaten to fire her because she's always late to work. And she's like, well, I need the money. So it's kind of, I thought that was a really great uh, point to her story was like, she was, she was going to have her dad killed just because like she's short on cash. Mm -hmm. It's not even for anything major. <laughs> but anyway, in the end, um, all the players, the, so Olia's mom, her dad, the dad's partner, and Olia all get killed. Yep. And the one who's left is the boyfriend. And that's, I think, where the title comes from. Because throughout the, the film, he gets injured pretty badly. Oh, yeah. Like, at one point, his heart stops, and he's shot. And you would assume that he's dead, and the characters have, say a couple times, like, you're not dead? Uh, anyway... This film is very styled. Oh yeah, stylized. It's a, I, I think it's a nice blend of style and substance. Um, initially, especially with the open, the very opening uh, violent uh, altercation, was reminding me of that music video for "Turn Down for What." A bit. Oh yeah, I, you know that's a good point. I also thought of that. Um, what's that? Crystal. There's a band from the '90s, Crystal. Shit, I forgot. Um, it, but to me, the film feels like Tarantino mixed with like the exaggerated, like, like Eli Roth in Russian. Like, <laughs> well, I was also thinking of early films by Timur uh, Timur Bekmambetov, who did like Night Watch, Day Watch before uh, coming to the U.S. and doing a lot of uh, you know stylized uh, studio films like Wanted, and uh, it, it feels very much of that ilk to me. If you like uh, violence. If you like a little gore, it's a dark comedy. The Russians do violence very well. Hardcore Henry was another film recently that this feels a bit like. Um, it was lensed by uh, Dmitry Yulukayev, who uh, lensed the last film by Vasily Sigarev called Land of Oz. And Sigarev is a kind of a favorite uh, newer director out of Russia that I like. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I thought this was a lot of fun. It's too bad that uh, we're having an issue now with seeing films in the theater because this film would be so great to watch yeah, on the big screen. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Uh, what would you give it? I'd give it three out of five. I would give it three and a half out of five. Okay. Yeah. yeah it's good. Yeah, it's great. All right. Bye. Bye.